Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Trash Your Football. Today I have a very interesting video that was recommended to me by Aiden Justice in the comments of one of my videos. So if you guys have a video idea, please leave it in the comments down below. I'll probably end up making a video out of it. But the video idea was to do a video predicting every team's highest overall rated player. And since I don't have time to go through every 130-something D1 FBS football team, I've decided to take this conference by conference. And of course, where else could we start but the SEC? So we're going to go alphabetical order with each team. I'm going to give you the player, their position, and what I think their overall is going to be. And then a little bit of thoughts. Now, this isn't very scripted. This is going to be very off-the-cuff, kind of uh, improv Not improv, but impro Im improvisational is not even a word, I don't think. But up first, Jalen Milrow at the University of Alabama. Jalen Milrow has been statistically good numbers wise but if you watch him on the field he's not been you know the greatest quarterback in Alabama history I could name six quarterbacks that have played you know under Saban that have been better than Milrow I do think he'll be like a 92 93 overall quarterback which makes sense in my mind I think that's not bad especially for him being, I think, a junior this upcoming season, a redshirt junior maybe. Uh, last season, he did go 187 for 284, 2,834 yards, 23 touchdowns, 6 picks, 531 yards on the ground, and 12 rushing touchdowns, which is 12 rushing touchdowns is crazy. But that's that's not a bad year. You know, that's not an unbelievably bad season for Jalen Milrow. I think he'll do even better in his junior season. And if he decides to stay for his senior season, I think he'll be way into the 90s in college football 26. Up next for the University of Arkansas Razorbacks, place kicker. Hey, uh, before you guys get mad at me, it uh, I didn't realize that Cam Little had declared for the NFL draft. So uh, please don't be mad at me for this one. Cam Little. He has been one of the most accurate kickers alongside Harrison Mevis in the SEC. Last year, he was 83.3 in field goals and 100% in extra points, along of 56 and 93 points. This is a good kicker, y'all. Like, I think he's going to be a 90 overall kicker. He's probably going to be the best kicker in the SEC. Uh, he's going to end up being really fun to play with uh, as a kicker. You know, obviously people don't care about kickers, but kickers are people too. You know, kickers are people too. Up next, we have Brian Batty from the University of Auburn. Uh, this was this was hard because I almost picked Jarquez Hunter over Brian Batty. Those are both uh, running backs at uh, Auburn. I do think that Brian will be an 89 overall. I think Auburn's not the greatest team in the SEC. They're actually closer to the bottom feeders in my opinion, but they're not you know, like 0-12 awful. They're not 3-9 and awful. They're like maybe 7-5, and at least this upcoming season. Uh, he did some pretty darn good numbers at USF. Uh, unfortunately, you know, while at Auburn, he d just didn't... I think he got hurt. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, so he had surgery on his right big toe due to an injury dating back to high school. So... He didn't play much, but I think that this guy's going to be an absolute monster as a running back next year, not only in real life, but in the video game. I'm going to give him an 89 overall. And then up next for the University of Florida Gators, we have Graham Mertz. Now, hold on. Hold on. You might not like Graham Mertz, but you got to admit he did overcome a lot of expectations, and those expectations were low. Last season... He came in, everybody thought he was going to be the worst quarterback in the SEC, me included. You can literally go back to an older video on the channel where I rank all the SEC quarterbacks from worst to best that were starting that year, and I put him at number 13. I didn't have high hopes for him, and I'm a Gator fan. You know, I'm supposed to be cheering on my team. I didn't have high hopes, and he proved me wrong. He ended up being pretty decent. In my opinion, our best quarterback since Kyle Trask. He's better than Anthony Richardson and Emory Jones. I don't care. I know we can't run the ball, but uh, last season he did go 261 for 358, 2,903 yards, 20 touchdowns, and only three picks. Only three picks, and I think like one or two of them were tipped balls. So like, I, if he had played the rest of the Missouri game and played the Florida State game, he would have gotten well over 3,000 yards 
Uh, probably would have thrown another pick, maybe. You know, that's a good Florida State defense. Would have thrown for maybe 22 touchdowns, 23, somewhere around that. Uh, Graham Mertz is not a bad quarterback anymore. You know, while he was at Wisconsin, uh, he didn't do great. This was his best season of his career while he was at Florida. Uh, high hopes for him going into the 2024 season. Uh, I do think he's going to be an 87 overall quarterback. Now, this one was hard because I almost chose Montreal Johnson Jr. as the best player at Florida. Uh, give it, I, I gave him like an 85 or 86, but uh, Graham Mertz is the quarterback that I've decided to choose for this uh, roster. And up next for the University of Georgia, this one's going to be pretty shined down upon. You guys might think that there's going to be better players, but like I said, this is a predictions video. If you don't like it, tell me in the comments below. I'll probably read it and cry. Malachi Starks, linebacker. Malachi Starks has been a really good linebacker for the University of Georgia, especially in his freshman year. I mean, if you look at these stats, you know, five picks over two years over a hundred, almost 130, maybe something tackles, total tackles in two years. As a junior, I think he'll be ranked maybe 95 overall. I don't think there's going to be any 99s in the game. If there is, it'll be Travis Hunter. I still don't think he even deserves the 99. Maybe next year, uh, but this year, I don't think anybody's going to get the 99. I think Malachi Starks will be one of the highest rated defensive players in the country in the game. Uh, he will end up being pretty, really, really good. I say pretty, I mean really. This guy's an absolute dog, no pun intended. Uh, George is going to be another great team, but they are losing a lot of talent. That's why I have Malachi Starks as my number one player. And then up next, the University of Kentucky, Dion Walker, who is a left end from Kentucky. He ended up having some pretty good seasons, especially last year. He had seven and a half sacks, uh, 55 total tackles, 28 solos, 27 assists. Some pretty good football. I, I give him a 90 overall. I think, you know, for him being a junior next year, I think that's a really good overall for a junior, especially playing at a university like Kentucky, who's not been really known for college football, only basketball. Uh, this is going to be a really good player right here. Deion Walker. Uh, the left end, like I said, 90 overall, I think he'll end up being really, really good. And then up next for the University of Louisiana State, or sorry, Louisiana State University, Harold Perkins Jr., who is also a linebacker. Uh, he also had a really good season. I'd say probably better than Malachi Starks last year, at least in the tackling game, uh, not just sacks. Uh, he did get three forced fumbles, one pick, five and a half sacks, 74 total uh, tackles. 43 solos, 31 assists. This is a really good player. This is a really, really good player. This guy is one of the better defensive linemen, or not defensive linemen, DBs in the uh, uh, SEC. I do give him a 91 overall. I think Harold Perkins, I, I, it's hard to say overall wise for this guy, but he's a great player. Uh, I, good luck to him. This is going to be a freaky linebacker to play with in the video game and up next for mississippi state rufus harvey man oh man oh man oh man mississippi state poor mississippi state so the research that i did was i used college football revamped i used that game and i looked at some of the best players in that game on the roster that were you know still playing that hadn't transferred hadn't graduated hadn't declared for the nfl draft and I scrolled, and I scrolled, and I scrolled through Mississippi State. Graduate, draft, transfer, transfer, draft, blah, blah, blah. The best player I could find was Rufus Harvey. And I hate to say it, but 84 overall for Rufus Harvey, you know, being your best player on the team, Mississippi State's not a good team. Let's face it. Probably going to be bottom three of the SEC alongside Vanderbilt and maybe Florida. Auburn somewhere around there uh this is not a good team this is a good running back or not running back wide receiver not a good team uh I feel bad they've lost a lot of seniors lost some juniors lost some transfers uh I really feel bad for Mississippi State they're not gonna have a good year but Rufus Harvey 84 overall wide receiver then up next for the University of Missouri we have Brady Cook who had his best season of his career you know, he had, you know, a decent starting season in 2022. He had played a little bit before that. 
Uh, he had thrown 14 touchdowns, seven picks, but in 2023, he played really, really good. 3,317 yards, 21 touchdowns, six interceptions. This will be, I believe, his senior season. Uh, I give him an 89 overall. I think he'll end up, you know, being the highest rated player. You very well could give him 88. I think I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. 89 overall, I think, is deserving for a player like Brady Cook, who have sh who has shown that he deserves to be, you know, a, a really good SEC quarterback. Uh, 89 overall, in my opinion. Then up next, for one of the two new teams joining the SEC for Oklahoma, I have Danny Stutzman, who is a linebacker. I have him at a 95 overall. This guy, whew, 104 total tackles last year, 51 solo, 53 assisted tackles, three sacks, two forced fumbles, and a pick. He had an even better year his uh, sophomore season, but he's going into his senior season. This guy has been dominant since the start. I'm giving him a 96 overall at middle linebacker. This is going to be, oh my god, he's going to terrorize offenses not only in real life, but inside the video game. Uh, I do think that this is going to be one of the best defensive SEC players, not only, like I keep saying, in the game and real life, but we'll have to see. And then for the University of Ole Miss, I have Jackson Dart, who has also had a pretty good career at Ole Miss, especially last season. Throwing for 23 touchdowns and only 5 picks, 3,364 yards, a long of 68, he has a rocket for an arm, Jackson Dart is a really good quarterback. I give him a 90 overall or an 89. I'm leaning toward the 89. I think Ole Miss has a really talented roster. I would have given, uh, I can't remember his name for the life of me, but he's transferred. Um, I can't remember where he's transferred. I think o uh, Ohio State, but uh, he was the running back that had a lot of, you know, big names. Not big names, like, you know what I mean. He, he, he had a high ceiling, but he's transferred. I would have put him there, but now I think Jackson Dart is going to be it. Uh, really good player, 89 overall. And then for the University of South Carolina, I have Nick, I don't even know how to say this, Emmanwari? Nick Emmanwari. Uh, he had a pretty, pretty good season last year at DB. Uh, I think he's linebacker or something along the likes. No, he's a strong safety. My bad, my bad, my bad. 71 tackles, 47 solos, 24 assisted. Two picks. He's, he's not bad. He's a pretty good player. Uh, I give him an 85 overall. I think that this is a pretty good defensive player. He'll definitely be the highest ranked among the South Carolina players, in my opinion. Uh, next year, he or this upcoming season, he will be a junior. So he still has a lot of room to get better, and he's already really good. Then up next for the University of Tennessee, we have Nico Iame Laava. That's a strong name to pronounce, and a lot of people call him Nico I am Aliva. That's not how you pronounce it. It's uh, Ia Maleava. Ia Maleava. This is the hardest quarterback name to pronounce. It's DJ Uyunglele, or as a lot of people, especially Uncle Lou, shout out to Uncle Lou, like to call him DJ Ugi Badugi or DJ Ukulele. Uh, he's a really good quarterback, too. He's at Florida State, though. Uh, Nico Ia Maleava. Uh, I'm just going to say Nico. This one was hard. You know, Tennessee has a lot of talent. They're losing a lot, though. I I know he hasn't started. I know that he, or I think he has started maybe a game or two, but I know he hasn't started, like, for a full season uh, for Tennessee. But for Nico, eh, I don't know. I think a lot of you guys are not going to like this choice as the highest rated player for Tennessee, but I do give him an 84 overall. I'm sure that there's going to be somebody else rated better than him. Tennessee's a decent team. I just couldn't find anybody. Like, scrolling through the rosters, I couldn't find anybody that I thought was good enough because everybody else that was better is leaving. And, you know, that's kind of disappointing for Tennessee fans, but, I mean, it is what it is. And then for Texas, the other team that's joining the SEC this season, I have Quinn Ewers. Ha ha ha, everybody kind of expected it, right? 90 overall, I think, is respectable for him. Uh, last season, he had a way better season than his first year at Texas. 272 for 394, 3,479 yards. 22 touchdowns, 6 picks, 
Five rushing touchdowns, which is not awful. Uh, he's a really good SEC quarterback. I think 90 overall is respectable. I'm sure there's probably going to be someone else that gets like a 91, 92, 93 somewhere in there. But a lot of Texas's really good players are leaving. So I chose Quinn. I'm not sure about the 90 overall rank. They could very well give him 92, 93 as far as I'm concerned, but I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm not going to discuss this any further before anybody in the comments starts clowning on me. Then up next for Texas A&M, we have Moose Muhammad III, who had a disappointing last season. You know, he very well could have ended up being one of the better wide receivers, but he had a pretty disappointing season. I'm going to give him an 85. I think that's respectable for the likes of Moose Muhammad III. Uh, that's a cool name, by the way. Moose Muhammad the third is a awesome name, or or an awesome name. Sorry for all the grammar people in the uh, <laughs> internet. Uh, he's a really good wide receiver. I think he'll have an even better uh, senior season. Uh, last year, only 345 receiving yards, two touchdowns. I think he'll bounce back now that a lot of the people have left. 85, 84, 83, somewhere around there, I think is respectable. And last but not least, I have C.J. Taylor, the senior from Vanderbilt. Last season, 55 total tackles, 29 solo, 26 assists. He had three sacks, two forced fumbles, and two picks. That's really good for a linebacker. Uh, it's Wait, I don't know what happened. Uh, it's I put down strong safety in my Google Doc, but ESPN says linebacker, so I don't know. But I have him at an 85 overall. He had a pretty good last season. Um... I think he'll end up being a decent player. Uh, probably could go to the NFL. Who knows? Uh, but he'll end up being a really fun player to play with on the defense in the video game. I want to know what you guys think. Who do you think is going to be the highest rated player from every SEC team? Leave it in the comments down below. Make sure to like, subscribe, share the video, tell your friends. Whatever makes you happy. I hope you guys all have a great week and I will see you guys later.